Welcome to Video Math Lessons. I'm Mr. Polarski and I'm going to be your host today. I'll be talking about proving angles congruent. If you're one of my students, we'll be working out of Section 2.5 from your textbooks today. A theorem is similar to a postulate because it is something that we know is true, but it is different from a postulate because a theorem cannot be assumed true. A theorem needs to be proved true, then it can be used or cited in proofs done in any geometry class. Here we see the vertical angles theorem, which states vertical angles are congruent. For the diagram here, we have two intersecting lines forming two pairs of vertical angles. We have angle 1 and angle 2 being vertical, and angle 3 and angle 4 being vertical. By the vertical angle theorem then, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. Here we see the components of a quality proof, a, the given. Without the given, there's no way you can do a proof. You need to be given some information. Um, you also need to know what you're going to prove, and that should also be supplied to you, and a diagram. A diagram may or may not be a necessary part of creating a proof, but it usually is helpful. There are two types of proofs that you can produce. You can produce a paragraph proof or you can pr produce a two column proof. If you'd like to see some problems worked out or some proofs done in the two column format, check out the lesson on reasoning in algebra. Today we're going to focus on paragraph proofs. The name applies, we're going to be writing paragraphs. The first proof we're going to do today is to write a paragraph or write a paragraph proof of theorem 2.1. Here's our given information that angle 1 and angle 2 are vertical angles, and we need to prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Well, to do this, to produce this, we're going to need to fill in this diagram. Uh, since we're talking about vertical angles, we're going to use two intersecting lines, and we're going to label a pair of the vertical angles 1 and 2. Even though the given doesn't say anything about a third angle, we're going to label this angle angle 3 and we're going to use it in our proof. The first statement that we can make is that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 3 is equal to 180. We could also say then that the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 is equal to 180. Now there's really two reasons for that. That is because angle 1 and angle 3 and angle 2 and angle 3 are linear pairs and an application of the angle addition postulate. So we can make this statement for this reason. Next what we're going to do, or what you should recognize at this point, is that measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 3 and the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 are both equal to 180. So what I'm going to do, since they're both equal to 180, I'm going to remove the 180 from the first equation that we wrote and I'm going to replace it with measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 and that would be by the substitution property of equality. I abbreviate substitution with SUB and that would be the substitution property of equality by the using the substitution of property of equality you can make the statement that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 3 is equal to the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. Once we make that statement Let's look at this equation. The left side and the right side both have the measure of angle 3 in common. 
So we could subtract that from both sides to leave us the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle two. So by the substitution, or the subtraction property that is, the subtraction property of equality, we can change this line, or this equation, into the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle three, or I'm sorry, two, the measure of angle two. We effectively subtracted the measure of angle three from both sides with the subtraction property of equality. And since the definition of congruent angles is angles that have the same angle measure, by the definition of congruence, we can say that the measure of angle one is equal to, or congruent to, the measure of angle two. So by the definition of congruence, angle one is congruent to angle two. And we are done with that proof. The next problem we're gonna take a look at just involves using the vertical angle theorem to solve a problem for X. We can see we have two intersecting lines. This angle here is labeled as 4X is equal to or minus 101. This angle here is labeled with the expression 2X plus 3. Well, since those two angles are vertical angles, we know they're congruent and therefore they are equal. All we have to do is set this expression, 4X minus 101, equal to 2O or 2X plus 3. And then we solve this equation, subtracting 2x from both sides, giving us 2x minus 101 is equal to 3, and then we will add 101 to both sides. These go away, leaving us with 2x is equal to 104, and dividing both sides by 2, that gives us x is equal to 52. Thank you.